Next speaker is a gentleman I've known for many years. Um, he is a, a, a brilliant experimentalist. He is an astonishing uh, thinker and theorist. And uh, he's a, um, an, a, a very successful and aggressive businessman. And he is, uh, as of this year, the sole producer of this conference. Please welcome my friend, Aaron Murakami. How many of you believe in the basic laws of thermodynamics as it applies to all this kind of stuff? So not, not many hands are going up. Well, I don't believe in any of it. In my opinion, we're all living in a bizarro world. Everything is upside down. It's inside out. You know, you turn on the media. When an investigation is a matter, you know that you're living in a bizarro world. Everything is backwards from reality. And uh, the field of science and even the basic laws of physics when it comes to the claims about conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, uh, what inertia actually is, what gravity is, you know, whether um, a mass bends space, all these kind of things, the way they're commonly portrayed, are completely flipped inside out and inverse uh, from reality. He actually corrected thermodynamics because it applies to all systems and the conventional uh, closed system thermodynamics actually don't even apply to anything in the universe, not even heat systems. So the total amount of work done can be more than what you put in, and that's the subject of a lot of presentations that have been shown through this conference, and what a lot of the aim is, is that it can apply to mechanical systems, electrical systems, um, and other systems. So anybody who thinks that you can't have a machine produce more work than what you put in, uh, are com they just do not have this, uh, this frame of reference inside their mind and it's completely missing, but this is really the only thing that actually explains all natural processes in the universe, not the second law of thermodynamics or any of the other co conventional uh, ideas. And there's a lot of misconceptions about the ether too, especially from the skeptical side. So the ether produces work, which is energy, and if anybody uses the term energy and it's not work, it's a misuse of the word energy. Okay, and so on the left side, we have symmetrical, balanced, and so forth. That's the snow on the TV screen. And then you bring form to it, and you create asymmetry. And what that means is you've polarized the ether, and now you have a form of potential. When you polarize it, you bring form to it, and now you have a potential difference. That's the source potential that powers everything, whether it's mechanical, whether it's electrical, whether it's chemical, it doesn't matter what it is. Then when it goes from the process of being symmetrical and polarized, and when it goes through the act of depolarization through resistances, which, which destroy or actually kind of dissipate and diminish that polarization back to an unpolarized state, that process right there is where you get work. And we're going to go into, uh, into that pretty heavy.